Hi, this is Shinari James, a veterinary everyday success through knowledge. Today, we would like to discuss, don't get distracted. So what's distracting you? Well, First Corinthians chapter 7 verse 35 says, I'm saying this for your benefit, not to place restrictions on you. I want you to do whatever will help you serve the Lord best with as few distractions as possible. So right away, Paul is recognizing that in serving God and trying to live a life pleasing until you're going to have distractions. The enemy <laughs> put distractions, will send distractions to take you off course. Mark chapter 4 verse 19 says, but all too quickly the message is crowded out by the worries of this life, the lure of wealth, and the desire for other things. So no fruit is produced. So what we are also seeing is that some of these, shock, this, these distractions can be worries, um, it could be the lure and the attraction of, of wealth and, and the pursuit of getting wealthy and well desire for other things you know because we have desires for many other things in this life so if you look at this little um, diagram of the brain we'll talk about a little more um, a little more distractions that we encounter you know sometimes it's texting sometimes it's social media it might be movies it might be hanging with the girls hanging with the boys um it could be things that are happening currently, current events. And of course, you know, the year 2020 has many, <laughs> many things that could be distracting, you know, for example, the pandemic. So there are many things that, that can distract us in life. Persons can be a distraction as well. You know, as I said, it could be that many girls, that many boys, but on a, on a whole, we have to be very careful of the persons that we are spending most of our time with who are we are who are allowed to access us, access us meaning access our, our thoughts, our dreams, our um, imaginations, because the Bible says iron sharpened iron. So if we are aligned with the wrong persons, they can serve as a distraction and can pull us off course of the purpose and the plans that God has for us, right? So look out for that distraction. So are you a Martha? Or are you a Mary? So let's look at this um, account in the Bible, Luke chapter 10, verse 38 to 42. Now, as they went on their way, Jesus entered a village, and a woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his teaching. But Martha was distracted with much serving. And she went up to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things, but one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the good portion, which will not be taken away from her. Where to begin with this? Okay. You know, sometimes you can be doing something and you think it's a good thing, right? It might not be the thing that God has asked us to do, but it is good. So we might be, for example, serving in a choir, or we might be you know, doing humanitarian work, and all these things are good. But if it is not what God has called us to do at the time, it is a distraction was Mar what Martha was doing in terms of serving many persons who might be there might have seen it as something good. You know, you have guests come to your house, you serve them, but that was not what was needed at the time. What was needed at the time was for Martha to do what her sister was doing, which was to partake and listen to what Jesus was teaching them at the point in time. And you know, um, I listened to Miles and he spoke about this. Sometimes we think we are doing what God wants us to do. Martha was so sure that she was doing the right thing that she could have told Jesus, 
send Mary to help me. But God never asked her to do that. Jesus didn't ask her to do that. And sometimes when we think we're doing the right thing and others are not going along with us, we want to turn and get vexed. And the man that they come and assist will say that they're doing the wrong thing or they this, they that, and the other. So, we have to be careful that we are not distracted by the cares of life, by what might seem acceptable in the environment or acceptable at the time according to man's standards and miss the mark and miss the open door and miss the nugget and miss what God is saying for us to do at that point in time. Now we're going to talk about the three D's of destruction. I came up with this through the Holy Spirit, of course. Destruction serve to destroy. Let's look at this, Matthew 14, 28 to 30. And Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, come. So Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came to Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. You know, we could be walking on water. But when we look around and see the storm, the storm come into our life, we weren't good enough. Family problem. We walk in and obeying God, you know. Um, financial problem. We walk in and doing good, you know. Sickness. We could be walking on God, water with God, and God is there with us, and Jesus has told us to come. But because of the distractions, the wind, the rain, when we take our eyes off of Jesus, which is what the enemy wants, it can destroy us. Peter could have drowned. And he started to drown. He started to sink because what he stopped doing, he started to focus on the distractions. He started to give his emotions, his energy, his focus to the distractions. And what happened? That glorious experience of of walking on water turned into sinking. So distractions serve to destroy. Distractions serve to delay. Nehemiah chapter 6 was true. And I sent messages to them saying, and then there is Sambalat and Tobiah who are trying to stop the work on the wall, the repairing of the wall, the rebuilding of the wall around Jerusalem. So Nehemiah said to them, because they were telling Nehemiah, come and talk, come and we talk. So Nehemiah recognizing that they were detractors, that they were distractions, said, I am doing a great work and I cannot come down. Why should the work stop while I leave it and come down to you? How many of us stop what we're doing to come down and meet people? And delay. Some of us even return to what we're supposed to be doing. The enemy sends instructions in the form of persons. And they always want to start off with a word of, with a word of criticism. Are you sure I could do that? Do you know how much money to do that? Girl, I tried that. That thing real hard. That's stressful. Girl, I don't find you should do this. So you should do so, so, so. Come, let me talk about it. How many times we have allowed persons to delay what God has told us to go forward and do. So distractions serve to also delay. So let me be like Nehemiah and say, listen, I'm doing a great work. You can't come down to talk to you right now. <laughs> distractions serve to deceive. Matthew 13, 22. As for what was sown among, sorry, as for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word. But the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and it proves unfruitful. So this is the parable of the sow and the seed. And here Jesus is explaining to disciples what um, it's meant by, or what the, the, the seeds um, being sown among the thorns, what it really means. So what I want to focus is on the deceitfulness of riches. What, um, I think you'll agree with me, 
when you when you feel or you have money or you have a lot of money sometimes the enemy can creep in and make you feel you're no longer dependent on god you don't have to depend on god for anything you can buy what you want you can buy the best house you can buy the best health care you could go on vacations wherever you want in the world and some people even use riches to, to determine how they want to treat other people so riches can be deceitful because they can make you feel that you don't need God. But I'm going to tell you about something. I'm going to tell you something. You can't buy peace. You can't buy happiness. So, distractions can also deceive us. I tell you, distractions come in so many forms. Look at Samuel and Tobiah Nehemiah. They wanted to Nehemiah to stop the work. So they come and say, let me talk. Their intentions of their heart wasn't good. They, they were trying to deceive them. Just so that he would stop doing the work. So distraction served to deceive. So how can we recognize distraction? Because that's what we, we need to recognize when something is a distraction. We need to see that power. We need to see when it come in. So that we could avoid it. So here what Colossians chapter 2 verse 8 says. See to it that no one takes you captive through philosophy and empty deception according to the tradition of men, according to the elementary principles of the world, rather than according to Christ. One of the easiest, easiest ways that we can spot deception is when we compare what is being presented to what is written in the word of God. So, if it is we are seeing something on television saying, and this is what saying, and yeah, this is this is and this is new norm. And you know what normally what they will do, but everybody doing it. But look, this this person do this and they were successful. Yes, a lot of things are culturally acceptable, but are sin in the eyes of God. Wrong. And one way the enemy uses, um, one of the greatest distractions the enemy uses is to make you feel that, okay, because it's culturally acceptable, that I can do it. And this is a distraction to pull us off course. So in order to recognize a distraction, you need to know the word. <laughs> you need to know the word, you need to know the, the truth. And you have to be in tune and have some sort of connection and relationship with God. Because the Holy Spirit also tells us, hey, this is not right. Or, hey, this is a distraction. Or, hey, don't go this way. So again, we need to avoid these distractions. I right? told you a little bit about it before. How you can avoid. So let's look at, look at Psalm 19, verse 7 to 40. So, we are seeing here that... The word is what is going to give us the wisdom to recognize distractions, to make the right decisions. So when we know the word, we'll be enlightened. We will become wise. We can rely on the word because it is right, because it is righteous altogether, because it endures forever. So I thank you for joining me again. A better me every day with Chanel Jane, success through knowledge. And I hope that we would have learned how to avoid distractions. So, again, leave your comments. And if you want to discuss a particular topic, feel free to share. I will see the Lord concerning it and I will share on that topic. So, blessings to you.